Hey, welcome to Flight Test. I'm Josh and this is Peter. Hey guys. And Peter, this is a special day. What are we building today? The big guinea. Yay, the big one. Next one, next thing from mine to go in the store. You guys, want to thank you. The mini guinea was so popular. We were going to go ahead and hold off a little bit longer, but now mm -hmm. enough people want it. Yep. We're going to go ahead and roll out with the big guinea so you can fly the big and the small one together. One thing you want to do before starting this build is you want to get your electronics in order. It's a lot easier to get your white harness soldered mm -hmm. and yep. your servo centered and everything in order before you start building. That way you won't be bottlenecked later on and slowed down during your build process. Also, since this is a swappable, mm -hmm. uh, go ahead and build your power pods first. There'll be a link down below taking you to the PowerPod build video. Also, if you have any questions, there'll be other links to help you out with things like differential thrust, yeah. which we'll be programming in the future. Actually, yeah, we'll be showing more videos on doing differential on different radios, too. Yeah. I think Grotner's the next one, isn't it? Yeah, that's what we're going to be putting in this one. And you had a pretty easy time with the uh, differential oh, thrust. Oh, yeah, it was you? super easy. I mean, if you use like any radios before, the Grotner's really, really in intuitive. I didn't, have, I didn't have to touch the manual to go through it. And of course, as all of our designs, there are free plans available for this. Uh, download the plans. It's at the bottom of the article. Uh, uh, just remember, black is cut through, red is score, and blue is etch. We'll cover that more yep. as we build through the process. Get your materials in order, or if you want to support us through the store, speed build kit. Speed build kit. Yeah, you want to. This thing is huge. Yeah, it's how many sheets? Six this, sheets. This is a little over six sheets of mm -hmm. foam board right here, and actually we had to get a bigger size box for it too. So luckily, <laughs> sorry Josh, but uh, luckily for you guys though, Josh actually managed to pack this thing in a box. I would have never been able to do this. <laughs> I mean, look how small it is. It fits in this nice package. I think it took more time to, to figure out how to package it and stuff than I ever imagined. Mm -hmm. but, yep, so uh, it's nice and Josh. protected. Well, thank you, brother. Uh, get your materials in order and we'll get started. Now, before we get started, a lot of our kits, we have little tiny uh, tabs cut into them, don't mm -hmm. we? Yep. Now, we left these just a little bit bigger than normal, so I'd strongly suggest that you actually use a razor blade. Now, Peter, tell people why you like these things so much. I actually love these things, these single, uh, single use, like 12 piece snap on sets. I prefer these over those five piece like uh, reloadable ones that have a little latch and all that garbage in them. They just don't work as well. Okay. But I love these things because you can do this. Now you can cut the most shallowest of angles to get like a, a super precise cut rather than trying to rip stuff, you're actually slicing through it. And it wears and tears on the blade less, right? When you yep. cut a long mm -hmm. angle like that, you disperse a lot of the cut yep. and it doesn't dull as quickly. And plus this. You put it down, Yeah. no one's getting stabbed. So with this one, definitely make sure that you take a razor blade and just simply cut the tabs loose. Mm -hmm. Don't try to rip it. Now this wing has no dihedral, and because mm -hmm. of that, we're gonna go ahead and join the wings. Yep. But before we do, we're gonna cut a double bevel on the mm -hmm. leading edge. And the way you're gonna find your leading edge here, just look here, is you're gonna have these two areas where the wing's bent. The crease, the furthest distance from the trailing edge, is gonna be your leading edge. So go ahead and fold that 90 degrees. Do you wanna talk mm -hmm. them through how to cut a double bevel? Sure. Basically, you're just gonna fold it over like Josh does, and you're gonna take one of the uh, your knife, and you're gonna slowly cut like a beyond 45 into this. What would you say? What's the optimum angle for this, Josh? Yeah, it's about 50 degrees. Mm -hmm. I'm just gonna just pull it toward myself real slowly. That is nice. Yeah. See, it makes it easier in your hands too, because I, I don't know. I just, my my fingers are just a little softer. I don't like the metal just digging into them when I'm using a lot of force. So it's easier to use plastic handle, especially for younger kids. And if you have very young kids and you're building this and you don't want them to deal with razor blades at all, just get about 100 grit sandpaper on a hard wooden block and you can sand these bevels into uh, the foam very easily. The only difference is it just makes a little bit more of a mess. Nice. Yeah, now the only yeah, difference yeah, between a double sure. bevel and a bevel you use on your ailerons is a double bevel is mm -hmm. two and ailerons is only one. Yep. All right, so we're gonna do it the other side. Cool. Now generally you never wanna to cut towards yourself. Just keep in mind where your body is. Yeah. Doing this away. But the biggest secret in success is that angle that you're tilting it at. If you find the razor blade pulling the paper, that means your blade is dull. Yep, you just grab a new one. And the nice thing, you just snap off these blades. Yep. Or they're just so cheap, you just get a whole new blade. All right, that looks good. Mm -hmm. Now, before we go any further, let's go ahead and join these two together. Sure. Now, a real simple trick here is if you take two little pieces of tape, mm -hmm. let's go ahead and pin down the trailing edge. And you can see I let one piece of paper, especially with this laser cut, I let it kind of crush in just a little bit. Okay. Perfect. We'll do the same exact process on the front here. Uh, once we get these front and back together, mm -hmm. oh, you want to get that green? Yep. Yeah. All right, I'm going to start there. Yep. Now, Peter is a master of putting the stuff down yeah. without wrinkles. Nobody cares about the bottom. Yep, it looks good. 
The reason we're doing this first is now we have a nice hinge that we can open up and we can actually pump this full mm -hmm. of glue. That's what we're gonna do right now. Nice. Wanna get just enough glue where it kind of seeps out through the top. Mm, looks like we use a little more glue. Yep. Oh well. Easy way to do that is just grab a scrap piece, mm -hmm. go ahead and put a piece of glue right on top of it. Okay. Mm -hmm. And just avoid these two lines right here. Nice. The main amount of strength from this is going to be coming from the spars. There we go. We're just going to let that dry. Cool. While that's drying, why don't we go ahead and get our spars ready? Sure. Now, if you've never built these before, we have things called A folds and B folds. A fold is going to be where the side cheeks are above the bottom plate, and B fold is where the side cheeks are besides the bottom plate. And because of that, we got to remove this cavity to allow it fold. So anytime you see a cavity about the width of the foam board, most likely that's going to be an area to be removed. Now, what Peter's doing here mm -hmm. is even though the laser cuts this down very nicely, he's just lightly dragging this over just to have it cut a little bit further. Reason being is when you fold this over and you crack it out, you want to get all the foam off in one piece. Yeah. The less resistance there is, it's easier to, to break along that line. Yep. And it gives you a cleaner pull. You can easily go along like this and fold it. But if you notice, then you're going to have to work really hard and pick it out. Or with Peter's. Yep. See, I just tuck it over, get that there, and just loosen that up, and pull the whole piece out. There we go. That's where we're stacked. Very nice. I'm going to repeat the same process on all these cavities here. So you can see here that we're rotating this and kind of using the table as our friend, as I always like to say it. Because this is an A-fold, we're going to take our side cheeks against the table and we're going to rotate the bottom plate so in orientation, it's above. But by using the table and putting it down in this order, you're going to get a really nice, tight angle, just like you see right here. Once you're happy with that and the fold is good, I like to favor my glue on whatever surface you'd be gripping the most. So you're not putting it against the paper in this case, we're going to go ahead and put it against the foam. If you have to push the glue around the edge, you're going to get a really round edge. We're only going to do one side at a time. This way you can concentrate fully on getting your edges nice and square. It's good to practice on things like spars because if you do this on a fuselage and you have a round edge, it's much worse. A spar can be hidden. Mm -hmm. Now, for this, we're going to have these spars be on the outer edge here. And because this plane has so much weight within the cells, mm -hmm. we're doing something a little bit different on the center section, aren't we? Yep. So for this, we're going to fold this in half go and spray some glue. All right. Peter's given us a lot of liberties to kind of play around with some of these designs. So we've made some changes just to make it more uh, adaptable to Dollar Tree foam board, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. Now, we're going to go ahead and sandwich this with two paint sticks. I've really gone fond of paint sticks lately. I don't know yeah. why. <laughs> you put them in everything now. I put them in everything now, ever since that storage and got the strength from the storage. But for this one, you notice one thing is after these wings would sit for a while, they kind of kind of start yeah, sagging. Yeah, they kind of start dipping. <laughs> we didn't want that to happen too long. So what we did is we went ahead and we did a double piece of foam board. And the best way to get strength would be like this. Mm -hmm. But I don't want people having to go to a bandsaw or a jigsaw. Yeah. I really prefer to do that that way, but yep. we have to make this easy for everyone. So yeah. if, you got, if, you want, if you're more of an advanced builder, you can run a whole length spar yeah. up in the right position. Yeah. And that would give you maximum load and maximum durability and lightness. But for the most part, 90% of people will never ever need to do that. And I don't even do that because this is works great. Yeah. And the nice thing about this is since you're bringing a separation, you have expansion and compression or vice mm -hmm. versa. It's still very, very strong. So all we're simply going to do is glue this one on the top and one on the bottom. All right, cool. So our spars are now done, and Peter, you're obviously stress testing that one there. Yeah. All right, nice. so should I stick around for you to glue that in? Well, that's really funny. Well, before we do that, we're going to want to go ahead and establish a bevel, and it's a lot easier to do that without the spar on here. Mm -hmm. We're just going to simply take one of these guys, mm -hmm. and drag it, just open up a nice groove. There you go, Peter. All right, like that. We don't want this wing because it has a pretty extreme uh, airfoil to be fighting us and come out crooked. Mm -hmm. So this way we're going to go ahead and tell it where to bend. Now at this point, we can go ahead and lay our spars down and get ready to glue them into place. Just as you see right here. And if you notice here that the spars are just a touch smaller than the outside grooves, mm -hmm. that's so we can actually still put glue in here to act yep. as reinforcement. Mm -hmm. So let's go ahead and just put some glue down. Glue down on that. All right. 
here's a shameless plug for uh, the AdTech uh, hot glue gun. We were actually horrified when we left this back of the shop, weren't we? Yeah, the AdTech we were Pro shooting 200. In yep, AdTech Pro 200. We were shooting in Malvern. We left it there, and we did not know what to do. Um, this thing delivers hot mm -hmm. glue. So if you're doing bigger projects like this with a Kraken, it's definitely worth investing yeah. in a glue that gun that can deliver that we much glue. we go back glue. to that little sissy glue gun over there from Walmart. Yeah. It was good just for little mini airplanes. I wouldn't use that on a mini. Mm -hmm. Way overkill. But the nice thing is I noticed it doesn't keep the, it doesn't boil the hot glue. It keeps it real nice and, you know, solid mm -hmm. temperature. While Peter's doing that, I'm just putting glue on the stick here. I'm gonna press this right down in the middle. Like that. All right, let this part thoroughly dry here because we're gonna be flipping this over and holding it down. Yep. But while that's drying, we can go ahead and put our back spacers. That is a big weight. I think this is even bigger than the cruiser, isn't it? Uh, actually, yeah, I think it might be just a tad, a tad larger. And with the kit, you had long rectangle pieces mm -hmm. of spacers. If you built any of our previous designs, like Spitfires, Mustangs, um, you're going to see these spacers here. They're very, very common. Do. Little tiny etched line, about an eighth inch from the back end, about a half a centimeter. There you go. Thank Let's you, trade. sir. Trade you. We're simply going to line this up. This is so the back trailing edge doesn't drip down too far and act as flaps. We got to try flaps on this. Mm -hmm. Have you done that yet on the uh, I've actually done it on the old Depron version before. Okay. I've, uh, the fun thing is uh, I was putting flap rons into it and I put an extreme amount of flap rons okay. and I'd land on the runway. And if you've ever seen the uh, the Caribou, a DH something something, uh, it would do a cool landing. It would come down, touch its nose gear and ride the nose gear down the runway and then pull up without ever touching the mains. What do they call that? Uh, doing the wheelbarrow. Doing the wheelbarrow. Yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. So let's go ahead and fold this over. And you don't want to just try to do this in one fold. You want to just work it down very slowly so you don't put any crinkles in it. Keep in mind, always try to keep your workbench clean. If you have any globs of glue on the table, you're going to dent your foam mm -hmm. board. Yeah. All right. That feels pretty good. Yep. All right. Let's go ahead and I'm going to get a whole other glue, hot glue stick here ready. Mm -hmm. And for building this wing here, we're going to put a lot of energy mm -hmm. into the areas around the spars and yep. the leading edge. We're going to leave the trailing edge. We're going to hold down against mm -hmm. it, but then we're going to go back later and then glue that trailing yep. edge down. And for any of you guys looking to do like severe cargo loads, like like a lot, I don't know how, how much, what's the actual breaking point of this, yeah. but the failure points on the wings are about here. So if you want to definitely like take popsicle sticks, maybe invert it on this side, you mm -hmm. can add additional reinforcements. We just found it unnecessary, yep. but we haven't really fully tried to really break this thing in half. This is 0.51 inches. Mm -hmm. So you could actually take a half inch poplar spar and run it down there yeah. and it's never going to break. I know. Then, then you have to break it or someone's yeah. head if you're going to break it. It truly is amazing. I guess we're talking because this is a cargo plane. It can lift a massive amount of weight mm -hmm. for general purpose. This thing's going to be very well. Oh, and that there. also might be a fun future challenge. I might try how, how much heavy? weight can we put in this? <laughs> <laughs> go ahead and before we go ahead and fold this over, let's go ahead and put some reinforcement into these sure. grooves. So go run a bead. Here, I'll start on this right. side. We're going to run a bead, a hot glue, and we're going to just push our nozzle right in the edge. And you got to move pretty quick with this. But this is just going to establish the form. If you've seen the crack and build, like, okay. if you've seen the crack and build videos or a lot of the other ones like the Mustangs, this is very common. This way, this is nice and reinforced. But rather than try to do a whole bunch of steps at once, we're going to address this first. All right. Go ahead and just fold it over and hold it there. Mm -hmm. And now we're going to let the wing take its shape. And we're going to hold it there until it's thoroughly mm -hmm. dried. So the reason that we do this ahead of time is it's very important for this box bar here to meet the bottom of the wing and have it be parallel on the top and the bottom, just as you see here in the picture. So now the wing should be holding its shape, right? Yep. Looks good. Where are we going to put the glue next? Uh, we're going to put it in the grooves here on the leading edge, and we're going to do the spars. And that's pretty much it for that. Yep, and then we're going to hold off yep. on the trailing edge. We're going to hit that separately. Now you notice that we haven't cut any aileron bevels here. The reason being is we want to go ahead and be able to push in that area. And if the aileron bevels were cut, it could potentially cause a problem, couldn't it? Mm hmm It'll fold okay. around it. Okay. There we go. The reason we're putting our arms this way is that way you can focus most of the pressure right over that box bar. Mm -hmm. All right. Let's see. Mm -hmm. It holds. And this is what you want here. Just like what you see here, you want that box bar firmly pressed down and not raised up at all. All right, the last step that we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and in this area here, you can see there's a little bit of a gap where the foam just raising off. Mm -hmm. We're gonna go ahead and lay a nice long bead right on top cool. of that spacer all the way down, making sure our table's nice and clean. And then we're simply gonna hold it down on this side until it's thoroughly dry. Mm -hmm. cool. That's ready? Yep. Hey, look at that. And the whole thing just explodes. No, I don't want that. 
And if we did everything right with the spacers, the trailing edge of this is gonna meet up just with the bottom of the table, as you see right here. Okay, at this point, do you wanna go ahead and cut our bevels for our ailerons? All right. I just realized we're both working opposite. You go ahead and do yours first. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm grabbing the blade. Here, that one's a little cheap. Okay, while he's doing that, I'm gonna do this one. I should just keep changing colors for like every new cut. How long will one of these last at least one airplane? Uh, oh yeah, they do. But that one's just an older one. It's been, it's been used on many things. And I hate cutting hinge lines away from me. But doing what Peter talked about, you can actually drag this now. Mm -hmm. Take a saw. Yeah, it gives you a little more control over the blade. You know what, Peter, you're changing me. I like these yeah, things, man. I like these a lot. That's why I've been using them for you've, years. You've opened my eyes. The process for a bevel cut for a hinge line is the exact same as a double bevel cut for your leading edge. And if you don't get it in one clean swipe, you just go I back and do it over much. again. Well, you know, uh, sim it's simple paper. solution it's if you do too much. Failure. It's not failure. Give us a good opportunity to try to fix it. Yeah, now, God forbid you do that. Hey, Noah, could you hand me that scotch tape real quick? Here, you know what? Just to make you feel good, I'll do this side too, okay? Right. Yeah, I like taping my hinges anyways. Now, we're going to also go back and reinforce this, but this is if, a big if airplane. you cut through the paper, don't trash your plane. Don't get upset with yourself. Don't cry. Maybe a little. Maybe just put more. a piece of tape over it. Whether you're scratch building or whether you have a kit, you're always going to have little chunks of foam. A very easy way to reinforce this hinge line. Hey, you toss me that glue gun. Sure. Is you hold it up. Let me get and, boost it. Yep. Oh, perfect. You hold it up, and I like to actually leave this just as a slight V right here so my nozzle and my glue gun knows right where to travel. I push the nozzle straight into that paper. And I put a nicely thin bead of hot glue. Once that's down, so I'm going to take my scrap foam. I'm going to squeegee off as much as I can of it, pushing it into the paper and the foam, taking away all the residual. Now, the only thing I recommend is do not close this until it's thoroughly dry. Give it a couple minutes. Go for it, Peter. Here's a scrap piece for you. Okay. Dry, and what do you say we open up some of these holes? Sure, Let's knock them out. So what these doors are for is basically to give you a nice easy access for your wires to pass through all the way to here. That way you don't have to worry too much about fishing things through, you can mm -hmm. kind of push them yeah. through. Uh, there are push rods included in this kit, and we actually use those a lot as like a fish tape, and you can push them through, mm -hmm. snag the wire, and pull it through. But it's really nice at this point to take those servos that you centered up, put the linkage stoppers in, all your wires, mm -hmm. all that stuff, and get them hooked up. And that way when you put the wing to this side, it's just ready to go onto the fuselage. Sure. Let's do that. All right. While Peter's getting the electronics for this, I'm gonna go ahead and take one of the barbecue screws Too I late. included. I got them. Oh man, you already got it. And we're gonna go roughly about six inches wide here. I'm gonna go ahead and crack this. And I'm gonna center this up right at this back trailing edge here and glue that in with a piece of glue. The reason being is when the rubber bands go over, this is gonna protect it and keep it from crushing in and pulling into the foam board. You can use a, a popsicle stick too. Mm -hmm. There we are. Pour it right on over there. Now it's nice working from the outer inward, uh, especially with the servos and everything, because that way as you put the wires in, you're not trying to push past a mm -hmm. whole bunch of other wires. Yeah, these are small compared to the ESC motor wires. Yeah, so yep. just don't, I just don't have enough. Do you have your mini extensions? Uh, I got the wire harness for that. Oh, nice. We have the wires in that. We have a, this is a 10 shuttle extension, about 12, 12 inch. Okay. It's about six on each side, and that's what so we So you're going to make the connections in here then, right? Uh, actually, you can just go and fish them in normally. Because we can pull on the one side, plug it in, and then move to the other side. Oh, nice. So you can see here that we have our linkage stoppers pretty much all the way out. It's one mm -hmm. hole from the outside, right? Yep. And that's because you love lots of throw. Mm -hmm. But you can, on this build, this is a little bit more advanced. You can dial in dual rates and expo. So you yeah. can actually mm -hmm. dial this down and adjust it. But boy, seeing the way you hover this yeah. thing, you want all the throw you can get. I just, I just, I just don't want to use expo. I just fly 100%. It just the and way I've does. been flying. It, he so. does. Some of these planes, mm -hmm. I don't know how he keeps them in the air without his expo and dual rates. I built a lot of really bad designs. So <laughs> that's how I keep them in the air. Now, I know a lot of people kind of build these airplanes as kind of like a stepping stone to the next. Mm -hmm. This is one that you really, once you build it, you're probably going to keep it in your arsenal for a long time, aren't you? Yep, at least until the water gets to it. Yeah, well, there's things that can't dry, and actually we have some really good episodes oh, yeah, where you can waterproof your airplane. And if I was ever going to spend time waterproofing something, this would be the one that would do it. If it can't dry, you can actually run underwater. It's amazing. You just got to seal your edges. Mm -hmm. 
So while Peter's getting his connections made, I'm going to go ahead and seat this in. Now, actually, I'm going to keep this so the servo head is as far away from the hinge line, just so it's not too stubby of a little servo, right? Yep. I'm going to seat this down in here. It's going to be a little bit of a friction fit. And then we'll drop a glue underneath it each end. Cool. And we'll pull it down. But this is just a simple $5 servo center that we use as manual, center, and then actually pulsing back and forth. But they work really good. Just yeah. keep in mind, use this on a single cell battery, not a three cell or a two cell. You're going to burn everything up. Yeah. The reason we pulled this out now is so we can recenter these servos. Yeah, there you go. Right there we center. are. That's centered up. Cool. Now in our hardware bag, we're going to have a chunk of control horns. So one thing I like to do is while the control horns are around here, push this flat up against the table so you don't dimple anything. And just simply let it seat in here. You always want to make sure the holes of the control horn are directly over your hinge line. Once you're happy with that, put a little drop of glue inside of it, press it down in. If you're ever worried, you can always go back. Just put a little tiny bead on both sides. These are actually really strong glue uh, mm -hmm. control horns. Yeah, I haven't had one pull out yet. I'm just simply going to eyeball this. Cut this about a half inch long. Thank you. Yep. Yeah, you can grab another one there. Yeah, don't throw this away. This is .063 wire, which is really good for light setups. You can see that we keep our push rods to a minimum as far as distance because we don't want these bending at all. And we're going to go to the furthest hole away from the hinge line. So I'm going to go ahead and lock this down since it's still at the neutral set point. Let me so I'm fire back up anyways. Yep. And before we fly, we're going to go back around, we'll power everything up, and we'll recenter everything just mm -hmm. one final time. All right. So what do you say? We Let's do power pots. So we're going to put this aside and we're going to do our, our uh, nacelles now, right? Sure. Once again, if you see foam score cuts yep. that are about the width of the foam, just remove it. We're not going and cutting all the way through. We're just dragging this a little bit deeper. It's going to give it a nice hard edge. Now the one additional area that we're going to remove is going to be the space between here. This is going to be what gives us a proper thrust angle. A little bit wider. Go ahead and remove that. You can see with that pre-cutting, it just pops right off. No problems. While we're here, we're going to go ahead and remove this area right there as well. Too. So this is another common fold that we have, and probably the most popular one. That's B-fold. And that is where the side cheeks are going to be beside the bottom plate. If you ever have any questions about that, just look at the etching mark on either the plans or on the speedboat kit to give you an indication here. And where we're going to be looking is the orientation in this area here. So in this case, this is going to look like this. Now what Peter's doing is he's letting the side hang over just a little bit because these tabs actually stick down just a little bit. Yeah, you can't do them on a flat table. Yeah, otherwise you're going to be flattening the tabs. Yeah, that's so no good. What you can do is rock it back and forth and get both sides to favor it. Mm -hmm. But what he's doing is just perfect. What I'm going to do here is I actually pull this piece of paper off. Reason being is when this goes around, if this wants to come undone, it's going to leave the paper there. This can be done before the side cheeks or after. So we're just going to fold this around. And this is going to be the shim for your power pod to give it the proper down thrust. While we have this off, there's a cool technique I want to show you nice folks here that you can use with just a scrap piece of foam board. And around the nacelles and leather areas, especially since this is a plane that you're going to want to keep for a long time, mm -hmm. this is a really cool, simple trick you can do. Once again, it's on our uh, foam board tips and tricks with hot glue. We're simply going to just cut a little notch right here. Boy, I hope I'm not keeping tabs on how many times I say simply. We're easily going to. We're making a, a squeegee here. I'm not saying easily. We're going to easily. easily. Yeah, you We're can easily say simply. Do this. Okay, you say simply or easily, I'll say simply. I'm going to go ahead and just take a thin bead of hot glue. You don't have to fill up the cavity. I'm just going to drag it right over here. I'm going to drag this all the way around. And if you look close, what it's doing is it's actually rounding off the edges. It's also spreading just a little bit of hot glue on these edges. 
Now what this does is over time, as your plane gets worn and torn, maybe wet and dry, it'll keep this from delaminating on you. If you do this around your whole airframe, and on this plane since so many edges are sealed, uh, you don't have a lot of edges to do. And then go over it after you're done painting, after you're done with your decals with a light mist of Camp Dry, this thing is gonna be as resilient, as waterproof as any other plane that you have. So we're gonna go ahead and finish taking off these little chunks, right? Yep, I'll pull them out. All right. So what we're doing now is we're just simply test fitting this down in here. Cool. We want to make sure that this area here is nice and flat and that the trailing edge sits down nice against the nacelles. I'm just going to go ahead and put a bead back here. Don't let yourself get burned. I'm just going to hold this until it dries. So what do you think we do the wire harness next? Yep, the wire center, Any of these. Now we kept the ESC separate because we didn't want to have to uh, mm -hmm. juggle them against the power pod. It's yeah. a lot easier to make our connections, and then we can make our connections to our power pod. If you're not familiar with how ESCs work with the motor, if it's rotating the wrong way, mm -hmm. you simply connect any of the two mm -hmm. in a different orientation, yeah. flip them around. And in some ESCs have a programming sub menu, you can go in there and switch it. So if you hard solder it, you can still reverse it. Yeah. But that's it's really dependent on the manufacturer. He so has know. his connections. We're going to be running the servo leads now. And we're actually going to be putting this two separate channels, aren't we, for yep. differential thrust? Yeah, I like differential. What? You may be a little, you may feel a little differential about it, <laughs> or the viewers may. You run a straight, straight twin or a differential twin. Yeah. If you're a beginner and mm -hmm. you're looking for a training experience, definitely do not do the differential. Differential. You'll have your hands full. Yeah. Almost there. All right, now it's tucked up against the nose. Mm -hmm. This is where the extra push rods come in handy. Yeah. <laughs> the wrong tool for the wrong job, but okay. <laughs> Side cuts to bend the wire. <laughs> Good job. Okay. Perfect. Wonderful. Cool. And that's right. that. These leads are good. And that is Now, tapped. before we fly, we're going to go back and we'll put a nice piece of clear tape, but we're going to go ahead and make sure everything's hooked up and running before cool. we do yep. that. You want to go put, put the power pods on too? Yeah. Let's do that. Here you go. Thank you. Now, we're using the Emacs. 221509s. Now with these motors, um, they generally come in a configuration that looks like this. Yep. But this is for rear firewall mounting like you see here. Mm -hmm. Now because we re uh, reuse so many of our motors, yeah. we oftentimes lose hardware, but this comes with a bunch of really good hardware. Uh, but typical mounting would actually be where you have an X mount that's included in your motor kit that goes under these four bolts, mm -hmm. bolts on the outside, and then you get this really nice prop adapter and you simply remove these four screws and then screw this right on top. And then you have a very strong prop adapter mm -hmm. that, that's wonderful. Yeah, that one's um, easier to do than this because this, this requires some special modifications. Yeah, you had to actually grind the shaft, right? Yeah, and then cut a little screw for the C clip to snap into. Because we lost the hardware and we mm -hmm. didn't get this in time, we basically, uh, Peter just flipped around the yeah. shaft. And you can do that and too. And it works fine. Mm -hmm. I strongly recommend not doing that and just using the adapter mm -hmm. that you get with your kit. All right, so since we don't know exactly what the order is, we're just going to take a gamble, right? Mm -hmm. If we're backwards, we're backwards. We should honestly probably take off these props too so we can yeah, do our we'll differential test. So what Peter's doing is we're going to actually hook this up to the servo tester. Here's a battery for you. Cool. And we're going to use a servo tester to find out. Let's go to manual. Okay. All the way down. Now we can use a servo tester as we would our throttle. This is why it's so important to remove your... Oh, backwards. I'm on this yeah. You, yeah, we're both running backwards. We're both running backwards. Okay. So we fix that. We're just going to unplug any two we want. Now it's really important with ESCs that you don't have the grass or one lead touch the other. Yep. So if your insulation's ever not good enough and these can touch and short out, you're gonna blow up your ESC by doing that. You gotta be very careful. So make sure they're properly assembled. You just have to use a little piece of tape. Now this yep. one's going this way. Yep. That's which, way is, that's which way is yours going? That's where we wanna go. Mine's going the right way. I think mine's going backwards still actually. Shoot. Oh, it's going the right way. That's where you wanna turn. Let's go forward. Oh, you're running them both the same direction. Yeah. I thought okay. we were counter -rotating. Oh, yeah, I just got standards okay, up here. Okay, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> so that's confusion. Very good. Yeah, you don't need to run counter-rotating props, do Yeah, you? I don't run them ever. Okay. I mean, it's, it's nice you have them on hand, but I don't make a big emphasis on being counter-y about it. There we go. Well, let's lock on the power pod. What do you say? Yep. Sure. Barbecue skewer for you. Now, there's one common step in uh, swappables that we always do, and that's putting the alignment dials in the front. We don't need to do it with these because we have two cross members that we can poke this through. So we're going to make sure this is thoroughly down in the seat. And we're not going to try to drive it through one and out the other. We're just going to go on one side and then on the other and then pass it on through. All right. 
Oh, no. thanks. And mm -hmm. you broke it. No, if, if when you crack these, if you crack them and crack them on orientations and mm -hmm. break those strands, come out with a nice clean crack. My favorite is to roll it back and forth mm -hmm. with, uh, with a knife. That's the cleanest. Yep, there we are. We'll do that one more time from the very back here. There we are. Unplug this. Oh, yep. Now we're there. starting to leave the propeller off because we still have to do the radio setup. Correct. So we'll keep these guys and set them aside. So the wing is all but done, but our final step is to tape our little axis panel shut. Now the nice thing about this, let just trim this down just a little bit. The nice thing about this is if you ever have to access it again, you simply just cut the, cut the little grooves open again. Just so right down. Just like that. Yep. All right, ready to move on to the fuselage? Yeah, go to the fuselage. One reason why I'm getting the, uh, the wing out of the way is once mm -hmm. you build the fuselage, you're virtually ready to go. Yeah, you're almost done. You're just Actually, about you're done. Actually, you're pretty much done. But the fuselage does have a lot of individual pieces, and if you're cutting this out as a scratch build, take your time, follow the lines, trace the patterns, because everything requires us to be as square as possible. Mm -hmm. And that's probably the moral of the story, especially with a big fuselage like yeah. this. Keep it square, take your time. Uh, once again, going over different colors, can't reinforce it enough, because in this case, the blue line will be our crease line. So black means cut through, red means score, blue means crease, or an indication mark. Uh, before we fold this up, we're oh. going to do what Peter's doing. Mm -hmm. He's removing all the cavities. Just like any other build. Yep, just like any other build. I'm going to go find a triangle real quick, okay? All right. Okay. Now we're going to crease these too because we're going to go and yes. fold this up. And the reason I grabbed your carpenter squares, actually you don't need to do that. Uh, oh, I did anyways. it anyway. Yeah, we don't have to. Just simply hold the carpenter square or a straight edge mm -hmm. and fold it up. And when you fold it up, fold it beyond the point that it needs to go so when it relaxes, mm -hmm. it's about at the angle that you're gonna need it. There you go. By doing that, you don't have to fight everything okay. there. And also take your time with this. Uh, one thing to do is when you fold this up, you know, you, you're rustling around, mm -hmm. make sure that when we fold this up that there's nothing blocking this because it yeah, just tilts if tilts a little do, bit. It's gonna be trouble. It's gonna be trouble. And also when you do this, make sure you select this, the straightest piece of foam board you got too. Yes. If you have if you have like a, a warped one, it's still gonna be warped and it'll, it'll keep fighting you. We're using our new flight test foam. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, we now have manufactured foam board. Guess what, it's the exact same as Adam's foam board. The only cool thing is we have some very high specs on it and the quality looks beautiful. Very straight, very true, no wrinkles. All right, stop plugging, Josh, let's nope, get back to work. Nope, seamless plugs going on. Uh, this is a B-fold, so B means side plates are besides the top plate or the bottom plate. It's always the orientation. I'm keeping my hand flat up against the surface right here. This is the most important piece, because if you get this nice and dried mm -hmm. and secure, this piece is going to be a lot less work, but always make sure that this is flat up against your board. Mm -hmm. If this has a little bit of a, a warp or a wrinkle, uh, what you're going to have is a crooked tail. Yep. Now, I've seen your plane fly bashed up and beat oh, up yeah. really badly. You've seen my brothers. He just kept going with yeah. his. It's still going to fly. It's still going to mm -hmm. fly probably really good, but it's going to look funny. Yeah. So might as well keep it straight, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Keep it All straight. All right. Ready for the other side? Mm -hmm. You can see Peter's favoring the glue towards the surface that's going to need it the most. If you put it where the paper is and it has to push around the paper, all you're doing is promoting something that will give you something crooked. All right. All right, while Peter's cutting out the bottom plate, there's gonna be some pieces in your kit that are gonna look like this. And what these pieces are is nothing more than reinforcement for different uh, dowels and, uh, and uh, wing hold downs. Uh, what I didn't want to have happen is when the pressure of the rubber band came through, that it bent this. Now you can simply go ahead and use an actual hardcore dowel rod, but we really love these. We love keeping the components simple. So if you want to go and use different materials, you're always welcome to. And we're gonna drag this through and make a cavity mm -hmm. opened up. I'm also gonna go ahead and pop this through now. Right through the bottom. And we'll leave about a half an inch on both sides. Now most planes you don't have to worry about this, but in this case this is just a nice little bit of insurance. We're going to go ahead and we're going to glue this hard right on the bottom here. Now one thing I'm going to avoid is I'm going to avoid, go ahead, I'm going to avoid putting it and gluing the actual dowel itself down. Reason being is if it does break, you can replace it. Even pressure, we'll hold it there until it's dried. Alright, so while Josh has simply been doing that, I have easily done this. Please piece it out. I'm gonna go ahead and bend this just to make it contour the shape That's a little. That's my new hang-up word again. Easier. All over again. I thought it was out of my life forever, but I it's back. I just the table edge like that, and that's about it. We'll pop the drawer out a little bit later on once we get a little further into the build. Let me get my back, my back uh, thing down. I was talking. <laughs> Hard to believe, huh? Looks yeah. good. And 
Is he not focusing? No, you can just tell me in the morning. <laughs> nah, I don't want to inconvenience you. <laughs> Keeping that table from floating away, right? Mm-hmm. Once again, we're not gluing the barbecue skewer down. We're just surrounding it. All right, now we're ready for the top plate, right? Yep, we'll put that on. And as you can see, this isn't changing at all. Mm -hmm. It's this still is flat. Nice and flat. All right, so when I do this, I like to start uh, up where the canopy is going to be. Yep. Keep everything as sharp as possible. And you can actually do this section at a time. You can get this mm -hmm. and then fold that. Yep. And then fold it down. That's an excellent way to do it. So Peter is going to go ahead and put a bead of glue mm -hmm. just back to where the actual, uh, what is that, Bombay door, barn door, what do you call that? Cargo door. Cargo door. Cargo hatch. Cargo canopy. Cargo bay. No, I'll actually, hold this nice and flat bay. for you. Cargo bay door. Yep. Cool. Do you know what the proper term is? I have no idea what the term is. <laughs> That's fine. You can make it up. Yeah, let's just make stuff up. It's almost the internet does anyway, so. so. While Peter's holding that, I'm gonna go ahead and go back and make sure this stays nice perpendicular. Looks good? Mm -hmm. All right. Looks great. I shall just do this yep. over here. It'll be easier to come on. I like your suggestion of having multiple glue guns. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's why I used to have when I had really, really big projects. Yeah. I had a really big airliner I built. Now this I one here. Guns for stuff. Okay. Yep. Just a little hot. We can actually flip this over and use the table as a friend now. Mm -hmm. Peter's holding that down. I'll make sure it stays perpendicular. Cool. All right, looks good. All right, I'll just go knock these out since we're here. Super. Now, normally when we do this, we go ahead and we do the tail surfaces first, but this is actually very convenient to get all this stuff done ahead of time. Yep. And then once the fuselage is done, then building the tail surface. Mm -hmm. That way, when you put it on, you're not banging the tail around as you're yeah. putting the fuselage mm -hmm. together. The rear portion of the fuselage is now done. As we work up towards the nose, we're going to go ahead and build some doublers and some reinforcement plates. Now, if you've seen the build video of the Mini Guinea, this is very similar, yep, isn't it? Yeah, just a blown-up version of that. Just a blown-up version with a couple of moved uh, spots for uh, batteries and other things. Now, this has some really goofy folds to it, but if you look at the pictures, it all makes sense. Mm -hmm. uh, these are A-folds because generally when you're designing, you want to have the uh, A-folds where the top plate is sitting down. If there's a load on top of that, mm -hmm. you want it to be braced by the side plates. If you want form and function and smoothness, that's when you usually go with the B-fold. So you can see here, we got the A-folds, and also we have this other A-fold, which is a little bit goofy, but we actually have the picture to show the side profile of how this is gonna look. Yeah. Get, get out of there, get lost, no one needs you. It's pretty heartless. Yeah. All right, so let me say we put these together first. Sure. That right. feels good. Ready for glue? Nice. Now just a little tip here. This is a lot easier to do now than later. So yeah. we're going to go ahead and jump ahead and do it. Uh, we're going to go ahead and cut just a couple of inches to make a nice hard plate. And this is going to be what our nose gear swivels on. Now you can actually do some pretty cool things mm -hmm. and make a steerable nose gear. Yep. But with differential thrust, we don't even need it. You don't even need and it. And plus, I don't spend a whole lot of time on the ground anyway, so I take off. Yes, but sir. for each does, for to each his own. Most people will do their own thing. Yeah. So there'll be steerable nose gear setups, and actually check out on the forums too, because I've seen a lot of things people already done with the mini guinea, and that's only been out for about a month. Yeah. Yeah. A so there'll be there will be more mods and more documentations on this plane too. Yeah. And please, if you guys do something cool, let us know. What I'm doing here is I'm just scoring both sides of this mm -hmm. paint stick, and all this is is just a hard mount. And like you said, Peter, you're not on the ground very often. Mm -hmm. I just take off. So just take off. Now, the only thing we want to do by doing it this way, which is easier, we got to account for the fact that the gap is going to go here. So we're just going to mm -hmm. favor back just a little bit away from here. Cool. Right, there you go, Josh. Thank you, sir. Take that one. So we'll leave about a, about a width of foam right here. It's better to be a little bit wide than, than narrow. Beautiful. Yeah, if you, if you guys feel like you're going to crash a lot or bang your nose gear up, you can just go around the perimeter too with more glue. Yeah. But I find it pretty much unnecessary for most normal light flying. All right, give me some glue on the sides there. Nice. 
fold this up and just turn this like that. Let it dry. You do this top one. I think I've already done that. Let's go. Okay, let's go and get that. Just go ahead and get that glue Oops. right there. Yep. Yeah. So just do just do the um the U. Don't do the uh, box okay. when they do that. See, it's not not too crucial. Mm -hmm. Push it down. And generally, when it's down here, you just close this like a door, just like you see here. Now on the mini guinea, I wish we would have thought about this ahead of time. Mm -hmm. This would be the perfect time to actually bend our wire and yeah, dial in here. Yeah, let's gonna so. do the gear now. So we'll yeah. do that. All right, so now we're gonna drill these holes out. Yep. See you later. I was saying goodbye to Austin because we had a done with him. All right, now it should be a friction fit, right? Yep. Tell me. Does it feel friction enough? Maybe too frictiony. Too yeah, I need to drill a bit. Just draw it out a little bit more. All right. Now this is the one part where the reason why we call this kind of an intermediate build or even closer to the advanced build is everything's going to be dependent on how you want this to look, right? Yep. Now you can make this a belly a belly lander and simply take some. <laughs> don't poke it into your eye, man. You can make this a belly lander and simply put tape on the bottom. And even with differential thrust, you'll be able to taxi around and have a good old time. Just make sure you reinforce it with tape. Uh, but for this, Peter, you love. I give up. Yeah. <laughs> Here you go. I want you to... Stop it, Josh. Stop it. Let's make it a little bit bigger. So while Josh is doing that, I'm going to go ahead and cut two more little square pieces about. They're about maybe, uh, let's say about an inch long, I think. Mm -hmm. Actually, a tad under an inch, I'm cutting mine. But these were going to serve as your retainers for your nose gear. We're going to put glue on these. You can use wheel collars. Mm -hmm. so yeah, this wheel is... collars if you got more money and you're fancier. Yeah. But this is for the cheap guy. I don't know about you, but I can never keep track of my wheel collars. I always run out of them. How can I? And I always lose the Allen keys. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, Peter loves making, uh, what do you call these, truck, truck axles or uh, where you have multiple tires? Yeah, they're just like double trucks. Yeah. Actually, no, trucks are referring to each. They're just two wheels on an axle. Let's call it that. Two wheels on an axle. Before I screw something he up. <laughs> he loves two wheels on an axle. So we actually now carry wheels in our store. These are the wheels from our store. And uh, this is the mini nose gear. It's used on the mini guinea, and also it's going to be used for the nose gear for this guy too. And a lot of this is by eyeball. I'm sorry we can only just kind of walk through the process that we use. But I want this to have about double the foam with space here. So I'm going to go ahead and line up this foam. I'll pull it out just a little bit of addition beyond it. Just to make sure there's plenty of room. Pull it out. And can you hand me the pliers? Yep, here are the pliers. Yep. Now the first thing we're going to do is we're going to establish the uh, the caster. And the caster is going to kind of make it want to follow, right? Mm -hmm. So we're going to go ahead and bend this. Now this is some thick wire. If you need to use a vise, you can. hear your knuckles cracking. Can you hear that? Yeah. Oh, there we go. What I like to do is go a little bit beyond where I need to, and then go back, and then it makes the wire nice and straight. How's that look? Looks good. good I like so far? it. Cool. Uh, it's a good angle. Good, good angle so mm -hmm. far? Okay, cool. So let's see. That's that way. And we're going to have two wisps wide. Mm-hmm. You see right here so we're going to go down just beyond it the reason this is kind of felt and not really measured out is every wheel is going to be different yeah and plus your landing gear height is going to change so there's no template really for this it just kind of you just kind of like go with it yep you want to keep it as close to the uh fuselage as possible right mm -hmm. all right so that's what i do but as your your, your opinions may differ and your cargo may differ too and it just pretty much just really depends it does all right and right about here I think bending landing gears is one of the most frustrating things pilots have to deal with. I know, I hate doing this part. This is the most awful thing ever. <laughs> there we are. And could you drill out those screws for me? I'm drill it out. All right. Actually, okay. Before I drill the wheels out, I'm still, I am still got the small drill bit in here. I'm going to drill out the really tight fitting pieces for that. I got a slightly larger drill bit for the wheels. I feel like this is going to try to grab. Yep. Oh, went through pretty easily. Yep. And what you can also do is you can go in halfway from each side, and they'll make a nice square. Yep, that's a good idea, bit. actually. Nice. Let me get the Dremel tool so we cut that. Super. Wonderful. So we'll just cut this just a little bit wide. But he's doing that. The last thing we have to do is we gotta establish a cast on us. So I'm simply gonna grab this right here, lay it down, just get a little bit of a tweak. 
So now the wheels will be kind of in a follow mode, won't they? Mm hmm Okay. Cool. It's got uh, a little marker, Nick. Yeah. I'll say we can actually even see those big pliers right there. Mm -hmm. Oh, you're trying to cut with that? Yeah. Ew, gross. Let's see what happens. But look, look at this. I know, I've used them quite a bit. There's a gap in there from all the horrible all right. tool now, mutilating bends. Because I'm all about safety, we're always going to make sure we point Whatever, this away. Whatever, Josh. <laughs> Last time you hit me in the face doing that. Oh, yeah. totally, buddy. Mm-hmm. He did. He even wearing the glasses. <laughs> Luckily, I'm wearing these things. Got it. Nice. Ta-da! Little hot glue. Excellent. Excellent job. Nice thing about... Oh, yeah, you know, I need that rest of that landing gear. <laughs> Where did she shoot the landing gear? I needed the rest of that. Uh, it's right there under the cart. Oh, thank you. <laughs> well, that was embarrassing. The last thing we're gonna do is we're gonna strip the landing gear. So we're gonna put that in there. I'm gonna take these little fillets right here. Try to line them up as best as possible. It may work better if you sit that in there and drive this up through there. All right, now we're gonna take that. Pull it there. Drive it all the way through. Get the other piece for the top. I believe in you. All right, cool. Your beliefs are good, because it fits. All right, now once we do that, we have these blocks. Put those to the upper and lower extremes. Attachers like that. Now we're gonna put glue, and we're gonna glob it all over these to keep these as basically like collars, but right. just cheap hot glue collars. And keep in mind, you want the straight axle to be about two widths of the same, uh, two mm -hmm. widths of foam board. That'll give it the ability to exit properly. So I'm going to use a lot of hot glue because this thing's going to have a lot of weight on it, most likely. Mm -hmm. yeah, I like that solution, Peter. That's pretty good. Yeah, it's just a, it's just a little bit because I, I the hot glue one kind of would kind of push out over time. Yeah. So I think this is just a little more surface area. Yeah, you, you're dealing with a lot more weight than you were at the Mini Guinea too. All right. So basically, once I've done that, you'll see there's glue on the top, so those two are connected. It's still a little wet because the pieces are wandering a little, but we'll let that fully fully cool down. All right. So we're done with this piece. Wonderful. Next piece we're going to put our attention to is going to be this simple piece here. This is going to be a double on the fuselage. Why don't you go ahead and glue that up? Cool. And while he's gluing that up, I'm going to go ahead and start cutting out the uh, release for this guy. Right. So I'm just going to easily put some glue there. You said easily. Give me my thing, Josh. All right, so that's yeah. easily, simply done. Well, you know, once you get on this road, it's really hard to get back, Peter. What do you think? It's safe to say that probably the nose is probably the most difficult part of this whole build. I have to say so. It, it's a little, it's a little more uh, focused. But the neat thing about it, it's also one of the most rewarding things. But one cool thing is we're also going to have on our store replacement noses. They're going to be built the exact same. One thing I love also is I love sometimes mm -hmm. flying FPV and not. You can build one of these nose custom for FPV, pop it off, put it in your car, and that way it's safely set aside. Yep. Fly it general, and then you can pop that mm -hmm. nose on and you instantly have an FPV ship. Yeah. We're actually going to just reinforce this cut a little bit, make sure the paper is completely separated mm -hmm. from the foam. Get that out of there. And we're take this the is one off. thing I just love yeah. about when the paper's on the foam board. Pull one side off, curls mm -hmm. up so nicely. So one thing we're going to need to do now is at this point, uh, we're going to go ahead and, uh, what, what do you think would be easier, to glue this up and then do this? Or I always did this first. I don't know, either or. Okay, cool. let's do this first. Which do you think is a better foam board master? <laughs> How about we do this one first? Okay, I think cool. It's probably both the same, but we're going to keep our hand flat on this. We're going to pull this up because we can't use the table as our friend. We're going to make sure this is nice and 90 degrees. All this does right here is make sure that we build this nice and square. It gives us the best chance possible. Mm -hmm. Reason being is if this is crooked, it's not going to meet up nicely against your fuselage. Cool. Let's glue the sides. Yep. Now the sides are going to be B fold. So, yep, those. Perfect. Nice. Mm -hmm. And we're pushing down against the table. Yep. And I'm just going to take this nice 90 degree piece of foam and make sure that we stay 90 degrees. Cool. Ready for the other side? Yep, let's do the other side. See Peter's favoring the area that's going to be glued down. Perfect. Pushing hard against the table. Mm -hmm. I moved a little bit, I spilled a little blue glob there. That's okay. While Peter's doing that, I'm going to go ahead and trace out this nose area. Let's 
I'm gonna cut right here. Now, just to kind of give you guys a look ahead, the windshield area has a portion that looks very similar to this, but we're not gonna be removing the paper. We're actually gonna be putting a little bevel in there, and that's gonna be for strength, you'll see that later. So don't jump ahead and clear out all your cavities at this point. Let's just go ahead and go one step at a time. How's it look? Looks good. Great. Right. Done. All right, while Josh is pulling that out, I'm gonna go ahead and curl the nose in a little bit. Use this table, or you can just freehand it if you work. Yep. Most of the curl is gonna be at the tip of the nose. Mm -hmm. I love how that bends and just looks so smooth yeah. on the outside, too. It pretty much holds the shape on its own, too. It does. Yeah, and you you, you want to work it so you get as close as holding shape naturally on its own, so when you come time to glue it, there's less fighting and fuss. And before I go ahead and glue up this A-fold, mm -hmm. I'll just pull this off. <laughs> <Simply. laughs> um, that looks pretty easy, Josh. That uh, looks very easily done. Look what I just did. You made a mess. Hey, I haven't done that Start forever. over on the there other side. There we go. There we go. Ah, there, you there you go. All right. We can still see this is an A fold. Do you have some glue for me? Nope. And this A fold, the reason we have this in here is this is going to rest at the very top portion here. This is going to give us strength so this uh, foam board doesn't mm -hmm. warp. And then just as Peter was talking about, we're going to slowly, I like using the cable as my friend. Mm -hmm. Slowly going to start manipulating the foams. It almost reminds me of when we used to have to do body work. Mm -hmm. You're working <laughs> with a piece of sheet metal. <laughs> this is a lot softer than using any hand. Yeah. You know, have a fitness shot if you cut yourself mm -hmm. either. All right. A lot of different techniques. Using your thumb. All works. The biggest thing is like what Peter said earlier, is that you don't make this have to conform, but you actually bend this so it matches as nicely as possible. The less work you have to do, the better off. All right, let's give it a test fit real quick. Sure. Now these first, perfect. You're gonna really wanna concentrate in this area where this paper is. You're not gonna wanna jam this back too far or else you're messing up your alignment. Right at the crease of where the windshield meets the lower part of the nose, is where you want to want that paper to set, almost like an indicator line. And we're only going to do one half at a time. But it's good to wrap this completely around and make sure we're kind of in the right ballpark. Oh, that's perfect. That looks good. Yep. And what we're going to do is we're just going to concentrate on the top half first. I can do that. Go ahead and just give me a couple drops. All right. Again, we're going to just favor right where that mark is. Mm -hmm. And this is definitely if you get the speedboat kit, get some extra foam board. If you don't want to buy the replacement nose kit, mm -hmm. that's totally fine. I would strongly recommend that you trace this out. If anything, say something goes bad and something's crooked on this. Yeah, you, you, just get it, you just get it around. You just do it again. Look at that. All right, ready for the next Yeah, let's do it. When this is in its final stages of the drying, one thing I like to do with the nose is mm -hmm. just set it down and just rock it back and forth. So now it's canopy time, right? Yep. Now you guys can do a couple things with this canopy as well, too. You can actually put your camera right up on the front if you want that nose to be looked, mm -hmm. or you can even, if you're going to make this FPV, use this opportunity with that extra space, shave this out, yep. build your pod, you know, get this ready. In this case, it's just going to be a standard old nose, right? Mm -hmm. First thing we want to do is remove the excess on the outer edges. In case you haven't noticed, we use that paper just to finish off this edge so you don't see that naked uh, cut blunt edge there. Mm -hmm. 
And this area right here is the area that most people, because of how we do it, want to remove. That area you don't want to remove. You actually want to open up that gap. And that area is going to actually rest hard up against this portion here, okay. just to keep things nice and smooth. So I'm just going to take what we have left of our barbecue skewers and open this so it can establish a gap just like that. And then this area, we're going to remove the paper from. Okay. Okay. Very nice. Roll it. Yep. Uh, then this table edge, do the same thing. I like bending the foam a lot more than the, the multiple creases, don't you? Yeah, this is much nicer. It, it'll, you can see the creases too when we, when we burn them in. Yeah. Like when we were prototyping this, we actually had a whole bunch of lines here. And it it, 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 looked, it looked all right. I, I sort of liked it, but... It looks like a ladder. Yeah, <laughs> yeah kind of like a ladder on the face of the plane. All right, cool. Cool. And from this point on, we have this little bevel here. We're going to go ahead and just start fitting this in. You see it like this. Now you can see that we have extra, that's because no one's going to have the exact same kind of nose. We can trim that out off afterwards. It looks good. Let me see if we put a bit of glue sure. and actually get that bone established back a little bit. All right, cool. Just hold this down, give it a good minute or so. All right, let's just give a test fit real quick here. You want to do it? Let's do it. Glue, 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 glue. What do you say? Ready? Yep. Now what place do you model this after? Uh, let's see. There's a little bit of a short sky van in there. A little, tiny bit of a C-130. Um, a C-160. A caribou. But mostly just an airplane. An airplane <laughs> with two engines. We'll just call it that. I like it. Now you can see that we didn't put any glue in here. What I like to do afterwards is put a bead of glue and then wipe it with your finger mm -hmm. so it's nice and smooth transition. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm just going to take a piece of pop or uh, paint stick mm -hmm. and I'm just going to run this. Now I'm not going to try to go through it all at once. Because most likely it'll, it'll kind of jump off track. A couple cuts. That's so nice and square. Mm -hmm. it looks good. Yeah. So at this point, Peter, you're going to grab the, the back side of that, yep. aren't you? Grab this. Yep. Before we, fit, this yep. Before we fit this on, we're going to need to actually cut mm -hmm. a groove right here. This is going to be where our wheel mm -hmm. is going to yeah, go through. Where this guy goes through. Yep. So we're just going to finish off that cut now. That looks a little sketchy, didn't it? Mm -hmm. And we can open that up with a barbecue scare. If you're worried about the strength of this, you don't really need to, but you can always go over it with tape and then go ahead and recut your line. It'll be nice and strong. Before we go, I'm gonna go and round the corners off to make it mm -hmm. fit a little easier. You can actually then take the paint or the tape and reinforce it. Mm -hmm. Yep, yeah, that's probably what I'm actually gonna do. Get that, pull it in there. Beautiful. And yeah, you can take your tape and you can pull on the edge and mm -hmm. curl it around. And just that one, you don't have to worry over. about doing a hard round on it. You can leave that one edge sharp. Yep. But just use the knife as a way to, uh, to apply it. Mm -hmm. All right, next side. So Peter's not necessarily rounding the outside, but mm -hmm. what he's doing is he's getting a nice edge. Yeah. We're just holding it in. And plus, because this thing has got like a shallow like U-channel in there. Mm -hmm. Undercut. Yep. Yeah, the undercut. That's a better term for it. I'm just yeah. going to go and tuck the, uh, the over tape into the um, channel. Mm -hmm. It's not very critical what you, what you do inside the plane. Yeah. As long as you got a smooth transitioning edge that doesn't peel off. Let's do the top of the last step. Okay. So Peter, you now have this reinforced. Yep. The next step is we need to mark how deep this is going to go into the fuselage. Sure. And the easiest way to do that is jam it in there. Jam it in there. So that's about maximum depth right here. <laughs> maximum depth, I just heard Max. <laughs> Max, <laughs> you heard his name. Uh, I guess he's having a little rough day. He's having a rough day. Rough. The mailman's not afraid of him anymore. All right, so we have our index marks here and you can see it's roughly about halfway. Now the important thing is when we glue this into the fuselage, we want to actually go a little bit further. Mm -hmm. Reason being is we don't want this to impact the end. Say, you know, humidity yeah. or whatever. Mm -hmm. We want it to be a nice tight fit and be tightest on this part. At this point, you want to make sure everything is good with the landing gear, that you're happy with it. So once we have this piece going in here, we're going to start laying down glue on the inside. Josh gave me an excellent idea to pick that up and then put glue on the inside walls and then lay it down. Bring it 
down. You can see the mark. I'm gonna go back in a little bit beyond that and hold this down as flat as possible so it's not crooked, it's just perfectly flat with the fuselage. All right, so the next thing is we're gonna put the, uh, the top piece in. So we're gonna tuck it in like that. We're gonna go about halfway. We're not being very scientific with this. A little bit under is better because if you have it too far out, you'll impact the top of the canopy. Now the same process that Peter did before here, we're gonna go ahead and do that again. Mm -hmm. Here, I'll let you do this while yeah. I hold this in. And roll that. Yep. And I'll just take this one, just kinda yep. pinch it in the pinch corner. Pinch that in the corner. We're just gonna do this one in one shot. Yeah. It's, it's on the inside, so I'm not very concerned. Correct. We make it a total mess. It's kinda nice, the tape actually gives it a way to really nicely, you know, fold in on itself. Mm -hmm. He's like, it's nope. too cold. <laughs> nope. Nope, Mr. Josh, don't want to go outside. Okay, well, that's all done. Now the best part. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm going to give him back his nose. Give back my nose. Wow, fits that, like a glove. That's a good fit. On a hand. <laughs> like a glove on, on a hand. hand. <laughs> Cause it fits perfectly. We're gonna go ahead and do with the same process we've done on many of other pieces like the power pods. We're gonna go ahead and pop this through. Make sure this is pushed back as tight as possible. We're gonna just pop it down through. Pop it down through. Same on the other side. You put these holes where they're supposed to go. What you're gonna see is the same thing that we had when we did our wing hold downs. You're gonna mm -hmm. see a hole just on the other side of the foam like you see right here. So as this goes through, we have a nice strength mm -hmm. strength right here. Now the problem is though, is when you guide this, there's such a wide width here. Yeah, it's like it's like playing like golfer. Yeah. Uh, it, I don't know, it, 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 it's, it's, just, it's, it's, it's terrible. That's all, yeah. all there is to know. So we got a couple more of these in the kits. What I've done here is we drag this in here, so that way when this goes through, you'll see it has a nice cavity to mm -hmm. guide itself through. Perfect. What we'll want to do is move these in. Easiest way to do that is we sent this through as our reference. Peter, do you have some tape yep. or some glue? Yep. I have some glue. I got both, actually. And we're going to favor the glue far away from that hole. I'm going to open this up. Just like a mouth. Push it down right on top here. Just like you see. Now, a lot of these steps you don't need to do, but we kind of consider this plane, you know, a little bit more about This is not a plane that you're going to just wear out over a weekend and then build another one up. This is something you're gonna have a while. So little features like this are really a nice way to go because it's gonna be the difference between a, a sloppy fit. Life and fit. death. Life and death, no. A sloppy <laughs> fit and a messy fit, but also it's gonna make the plane last a lot longer. Mm -hmm. As you replace the noses, as you remove your nose, it's not gonna wear out in those areas. And also during a shock, mm -hmm. most of the load is gonna be transitioned to this area yeah. here. This would be a sacrificial lamb. Exactly, and you always want something to be the breaking point. We'd rather have something that's easy to replace than the whole fuselage. We're gonna repeat the exact same process right up here. This way when you slide this through, guides right Ingenious. through from one. That's how we roll. Here, we'll just go ahead and crack that loose. Now, it sounds goofy, but we have this wheel right here. Mm -hmm. What do you say we go ahead and finish off sure. and get a rolling Let's chassis, and then we'll put the landing gear on. Mm -hmm. So now the fuselage is pretty much done. We're gonna go ahead and put more tension on the landing gear so we can actually have a rolling chassis. Mm -hmm. Then we'll finish up with the tail section, and sure. then we'll be able to go out and fly it. Cool. Uh, let's go ahead and talk about what you're doing here. Okay, so this is this piece here I already started working on when the camera wasn't rolling. We'll pull that out. Yep. And then we'll crack that. This is extra. Well, that doesn't belong there. It is. All right, and this is where the lending gear is going to sit, right? Then you can just open that up. So we'll open that up there. Anytime you can make a landing gear wire or something captive, it's going to mm -hmm. make it a lot stronger. Cool. All right, so we'll find about center. It looks, looks pretty, pretty, pretty good. Close. Yeah. We're not being very scientific here because the wheels are going to be. You're going to be cutting it, right? Yeah. They'll be within there. Yeah. All right, so we'll do that down. Yep, as he pushes the glue in here, I'll show you kind of a cool trick. It's a lot of hot mm -hmm. If you want to be more precise, I would recommend using a ruler, but we're just going to be lazy. So, all right, yeah. you going to sandwich that? Yeah, we'll just take a scrap piece of this wood. Push it down in there. There you go. 
and we've really gotten to be a fan of using the paper to not only give you strength, but to give you finish too. Mm -hmm. So that's why this cavity is here. It's nothing but aesthetic. Mm -hmm. All right, so we're gonna roll that over. Get glue in there. Nice. Use the table as your friend. Mm -hmm. Put that over. It looks like a sandwich. It does look like a sandwich. A gross hot glue sandwich. <laughs> let's go ahead and while that's drying, let's go ahead and move on to the wheel pants. What do you say? Why are you doing that? Wire? Get it? Any gear wire? No. Okay, I'll stop. Good, good motivation to finish builds quickly, right? And get away from no, me. Actually, I think it's pretty awesome, Peter. You have a, a, a strange, miraculous talent that none of us possess. Not really. You have the gift of puns. I've been on the internet too long and around my friend. Every time we go somewhere in a restaurant, we can't sit down and have a normal conversation. <laughs> it starts looking around and then the puns start. We got this piece right here. You can see the edge. We're going to cut that off. I'm going to go and pre-slice some more of it. Just makes it so clean. Yeah. Once again, you guys don't have to do this, but you do want to make sure the foam is gone. It's just, it's a nice way to do it. Mm -hmm. And once again, we're going to go ahead and we remove the foam from the two cavities here and here. Now this is a little bit confusing because you have an A and a B fold, but if you look at the diagram, you can see quickly that the A fold is this portion here, and then the B fold is going to be this portion right here. So we're going to go ahead and do the A fold first. All right. Uh, right here. There you go. There we go. Hard to use the table as your friend in this case. We can go over here. Fold 90 degrees. And now we're going to go for a B fold. Mm -hmm. I always tell people to wait for it to dry. There we go. Beautiful. You see there's a little etch mark right here. This will be a blue line on your planes. So fold this right up. All right, so we're going to bevel this area off. Yep. Put that on there. I'm going to take a knife like that. Just slice that off. Very nice. Mm -hmm. Next step we're going to do is we're going to be peeling the paper and just like we molded over on the previous piece, mm -hmm. we're going to peel this off here. Someone escaping. At the very end of this, we're also going to remove this little extra piece of foam as well. And what this is going to do is just allow the paper to cover this area just as you see right here. Mm -hmm. Nice. Cool. And now at this point, it's just like everything else. Huh? Yep, we're just roll it over and glue it. Roll it over. Take your time, don't try to get this in one bend. Just kind of work with your fingers, use the table. Go over nice and gradual. You don't want this to, to be forced because then it won't be straight, will mm -hmm. it? There we go, what do you think? Looks good, Looks okay. good it. Yep, start with this, uh, right. this area right here. Let's cut a simple hinge, oh, not yet. Oh, you want to do that first? Yep. That way, let this thoroughly dry. Mm -hmm. It'll hold everything nice and square. Ready for the remainder? Yep, let's glue the rest. Yeah. I'll get you in there. Beautiful. All right, we'll just sit this on the table, use the table as our friend. We're going to hold this down until it's thoroughly dried. While Peter is bending this, and this is dry. We'll go ahead and just make a mark and just like we did with the other piece and just cut straight across. You can eyeball this or use a straight edge. You know, these razor blades do have a lot of purposes. Mm -hmm. like you can never just drop it like a straight edge. Yeah. Pull it across. That's fantastic. That's why it's, it, the takeoff angles are a lot more extreme. There you go. Glamour shot. All right. We're ready to put it on, aren't we? Yep. So I'm going to put the landing gear right a little bit behind the CG. You guys can feel free to shift it to just to according to however you load your plane. But I like it roughly about a paint stick width away from the cargo door. Yeah, it's about double the width of that piece as well. Mm -hmm. And if you take your wheel pants here, you're going to notice on the wheel pants, mm -hmm. the seam of the wheel pants. Oh, okay. Yeah. There you go. The seam of the wheel pants is going to line up exactly where the dip mm -hmm. of the fuselage is. Cool. Just right. there. So I'm going to take a pen, score the front. I'm gonna get a carpenter square just to make sure it's perfectly mm -hmm. straight. Now right. this part being square is kind of important, right? Yeah. Otherwise I'll, it'll mm -hmm. it'll uh, crab. Be, you'll be crabbing across the runway rather than taking off straight. Now we got our axle. We got the top part for this way from the uh, the bottom on the top. We're gonna pretty much check it there. Like what you see, and we'll put some glue on it. The 
But don't touch until it's dry, right? Yep, try not to move it as much as possible. Now before we put the wheel pants on, one thing we're going to want to do is put the wheels on it. Because mm -hmm. the wheel pants are going to actually encapsulate and keep yep. the wheels from moving. Yeah, so even if your little wheel collets that you make fall off, your wheels still aren't coming off the airplane. That's a good thing. Mm -hmm. They're like wheel retainers, like, like spares. <laughs> like safety lug nuts. All right, so we're going to attach the wheels on first. I'm going to make a little hot glue stand off here. I find it easier if you go ahead and attach the wheels before you put on the wheel pants. Yeah, otherwise it's not possible. Yep. Finish it off there. Now you can use wheel collars. But we really like the hot glue. Mm -hmm. it and just, it's just cheap, but it works nice. Mm -hmm. And when I need to grab it, I can grab this piece and just pull it off and it will come off. But it doesn't come off normal, during normal use. Now if your landing gear wire is dirty, oily, or very smooth, it's hard to grip. Easy way to do that is clean it with alcohol mm -hmm. or use scotch Bright and scuff it up a little bit. I guess we'll repeat the other side. Yep. All right, so wheel pants time. Yep, pretty much they're just Line them up with the back edge of the cargo ramp, and I'm going to glue them down. Nice. Okay. I like the detail that that adds Stick. to it. It gives a little bit of dimension to the bottom of the fuse. Yep. I just thought they looked cool. I've seen them on like like the C-130. There's little kickouts for the wheel pants or whatever mm -hmm. they call them on things that big. I thought they looked neat, so I put them on the plane. I like it. So we're going to repeat the same process on the other side, right? Mm -hmm. Yep, the exact same process. Line them up there, keep it all good, and glue it down. That looks awesome. So now we got the campy off, we're going to put one more last thing in here. Yes. What yeah. do you say we put the Josh and the stretcher in there? How, how did they get disemboweled? <laughs> uh, I don't know. I think the kids found your, uh, an, a dollar store action no, figure. You know what this is? This is Dave Knopp uh, using humor, mm -hmm. and then you taking my FT Element uh, battery mount. <laughs> your, battery, your battery stretcher. My battery stretcher. So this is actually called the FT Element Simple Battery Mount, and it also comes with the camera mount, Simple too. Simple battery stretcher. Yep. So... Peter already laced it. Now you have that for what, 2200? 2200, yep. Yep, if you're gonna go 3000, you go out one. If you're gonna go to 5000, you go all the way out to the outside. You're gonna keep this one pretty light, aren't you? Yep, I like to do aerobatics, so I'm not gonna concern myself with carrying yep. large amounts of batteries. The nice thing about this too is that's gonna also keep that uh, post yep. from the- uh, Ramming into the battery, well, ramming to it. It'll keep the post out. from the landing gear from, yeah, ramming into the bottom of the battery. Now, if you're gonna carry anything astronomically huge or you have mm -hmm. parallel batteries, this thing can carry a ton of weight. Yep. Uh, the nice thing what you can do is just reinforce this back area here with some tape and put some Velcro, and you can actually set your batteries right down in the compartment and make your connection through the back mm -hmm. bomb bay. Yeah, and you can even use the back bomb bay as your service compartment too. Yes. You don't have to even make it actuate. Yep. Now one tip, if you're not gonna use this element, one thing I strongly recommend is take some packaging tape and actually wrap this with packaging mm -hmm. tape. That way when you stick your Velcro on, the Velcro stick into the packaging tape, it's stronger. When you pull it off, you're not pulling the paper mm -hmm. loose. That's a good tip. Okay. Well, now we're on to the tail, aren't we? Yep. So this is going to be very typical, except there's one little difference here. Mm -hmm. uh, we took some liberties on this, didn't we? Yeah. And uh, we actually have this better. Fold, folding <laughs> under, uh, because this area here is definitely a weak spot. And with those beautiful side force generators, mm -hmm. you don't want this to get torn. So we're going to go ahead and remove the foam from those cavities here. Once again, if you see something about the width of the foam that looks like this, chances are you're going to remove it. And uh, in the meantime, Peter, you're going to yep, go I'm ahead. Going. Hold this guy. Yep. This is your standard bevel cut. Control surface the job. Get all the antsy right now. It's just like you know it's about to get done any moment. And I've easily created a 45 degree bevel. That's what you're doing there. What, do you simply see what I'm doing? I do, I do. Okay. Just do the same thing there. Awkward hinges again, yep. for like the one millionth so, time. Only awkward thing about this is you got to get it over this little tab right here, but this is going to be an A-fold. This is you see right here. That's super awesome. I would have never thought about to do that on the original oh, really? in a million years. It's amazing you came up with that. I uh, love A-folds and B-folds. All right, I'm jumping over here to Peter's hot glue gun. I'm just going to simply, huh? I didn't even do that one on purpose. <laughs> simply. <laughs> now I'm going to go ahead and lay this. I'm going to use the table as my friend. Kind of get it to where I want on both sides of the tab. Now all this is basically doing is uh, taking the place of triangle stock or uh, shear, or not shear webbing. Yeah, triangle mm -hmm. stock, right? Mm -hmm. uh, it's triangle stock reinforcement. Yep. Uh, back when we used to build model airplanes a lot, you always uh, go back to your tail and you use triangle stock to uh, to brace that and get I remember it that. A, and then like ball fluid kits and things like that. You got it. But it's the corner. This is our best version of what we can do with foam board. From that point on. Yep. 
I'll let you take your hinge line. Cool. I haven't even popped out the side force generators. Smaller dorsal verticals. Smaller dorsal verticals? Yep. I think side force generators so, are typically so you, reserved you, for wings. So, so you've flown this with or without? Yep, with or without, or with the big one in the center missing, with the two side ones missing. So Not it's really much of a difference, yeah. huh? It's really up to the, the builders, wherever they want to put them on or not. I just like them because they just look cool. Like the tri tail, fork tail. Mm -hmm. I hear that, rubs. Yep. Just take a wire. Mm -hmm. And we'll probably just do the same thing that we did before. We'll glue these on at the very end as one of the last steps. Mm -hmm. Just to keep it easy. Crap a bolsa. Cool. Okay. So now we have hockey gun hockey gun hinges done there. What's it we go and stick it on the airplane? Yeah. The easiest way before we do this, we can actually get a fit for yep. everything right here, right? Yep. I'm going to pass that through. Yeah, I'm going to knurl these edges over to make it fit a little better. Yep. Wonderful. Test fit real quick. Fit like a glove. All right. So now with this, what we can do is we can actually get a triangle gauge, and we can glue this on, mm -hmm. and then we'll lift it up, and then we'll glue the whole mess on together. Cool. There. It's kind of nice doing it this way because you're not damaging all those tabs. Mm -hmm. And it's holding in place exactly aligned with where it needs to go. <gasps> Pulled off. No pressure. Yeah. Are you keeping tabs on all of this? Oh my gosh. <laughs> so that's all dry? Just pop the thing in and go and look at it. Okay, that like, looks so straight. Does it look straight? Yeah. I'm just going to take my finger now while he's holding this up here. Mm -hmm. And just leave a couple little indents right on the foams here. Mm -hmm. So we know where to put the glue. Cool. We're going to put a lot of it, aren't we? Mm hmm. I was originally thinking of a way to make this removable, but then I realized that just every time you hit straight down, I'm just gonna pop right the barbecue screen. Actually, I used to, what I used to do is take like popsicle sticks, stuff very similar to that, and put little hard points here and use servo screws to attach the tail on the foamy versions. Oh, nice. Because I used to travel in a car, like no bigger than a Toyota 4Runner, which yeah. is a you know, fairly small SUV. And I'd take me, my brother, my grandfather, my dad, and like 10 airplanes and jam them into that vehicle. So the tail had to come off, everything had to come off. So it, it was it was a really really tight fit. What Peter's talking about could easily be done if you didn't want to do this mm -hmm. step. Is you could even take uh, gift cards too. I've seen people mm -hmm. do yep. it. Um, yeah, gift cards are a really nice. Yeah. Thing. What's his name? Um, Ed from Experimental Airlines. Mm -hmm. He oftentimes will take that. But you can use the gift cards and just mount them, and then you actually drill a pilot hole and screw it in. And you can put one pie up right here, leading edge and one at the trailing edge. Yep. That's what I did. I did one, two, three, four. Cool. All right. Do you want to put the uh, our braces in? Sure. Where did I put those barbecue oh, there? Cool. This has like 10 barbecue skewers in this kit. <laughs> this is a ridiculous kit. <laughs> it's crazy. All right, for barbecue skewers, let's almost drop it. We're going to go ahead and push straight down in here. If you've done the sword, this looks kind of familiar. Now we're going to rotate it. And as we rotate, we're going to push towards the center, keeping the bottom where it is, just so we're not damaging the paper more than it has to. We want to open this area just a little bit. And then we'll just lightly put it through half the foam. Okay. Cool. Nice. I guess we'll go to check to make sure we didn't warp anything. Yep. Now this is probably Still really this is really a must, don't you think? Yep. Yes, yeah, for side loads and stuff, it it really helps. All right, now I pop that out. A little glue in That's there. Fine. It is amazing how much a couple simple pieces of barbecue skewers can uh, can really make these things stronger. Mm -hmm. Nice. All right, this side. Cool. Once this dries, we can go ahead and take some side cutters. Mm -hmm. Just cut off the bottoms. All right, for this, once again, leakage stoppers are all the way out. You can put them in more narrow, but we can always dial it back. If you're going to be flying 3D and doing some really extreme maneuvers, even with full deflection, the thing wasn't squirrely. Mm -hmm. It was very docile. Yep. That's not flying very fast. This is, a, this is a slow thing. It's like a guinea pig. That's yep. kind of like lumbers around so it gets to where it needs to get going. I like how these serve. They almost give it a little bit of strength, too. Mm -hmm. All right. Once we're happy with the placement, we'll just lift these up. Same process as before. A little drop of glue underneath each little flange of the servo. We're good to go. You can see it's just a little bit tight. That's why it has to press fit down in there. Cool. It's control horn time. 
All right, once again, we're going to make sure that the control horn holes line up with the hinge line. Now, in some of our builds, oftentimes we'll say snake this in beforehand, but because everything's external and we have linkage stoppers, we can put them in ahead mm -hmm. of time. All right. You want this one? Yep. I will take this one. Go into the outermost hole? Yep. Is down before we fly. <laughs> yeah, for sure. So funny when you poke the hole through the little ash from the laser. Mm -hmm. Foster. Oh, Here we are. I'm gonna go ahead and apply some glue right on this area that we folded under, like so. And then with the lesser portion of the fin facing down. Gonna press it in. All right, at this point, we're gonna go ahead mm -hmm. and we're gonna be making our connections into the receiver, yep. right? Let's go do that. Super. So we got our wire hunters here, and this is our aileron, which this is a spectrum style layout. So one is throttle, two is ailerons. So we're going to the aileron spot here. We're using the new crop and receivers too. All right, so now we have a left and right on the wing. We got the left or, I guess the left, this is the right. And we're gonna go ahead and just guess which one they're gonna go into. We have the mix set on to channel one, which is throttle, and channel five, which is the other throttle. Because we have different programming here. So I'm gonna plug the battery in and check them out. Receive a strength. There you go. Cool. All right, so once you get this fired up, I'm gonna figure out which is my left and which is my right. All right, can I get a little piece of tape? Now we're gonna use this to tell, we're gonna use these to propel, pretty much propel our spin indicators. So we can tell which one's revving up when we need to go left and which one's revving up when we need to go right. And ideally, when you push to the right, you want your left one to spool up, and when you push to the left, you want your right one to spool yep. up. Okay. Yep, so they're pretty much in the correct order right now. Cause I'll give a left command, and this motor's gonna start up. And we go right command and that one, left one, will start up. Basically pulling and skid steering the plane over to one yep. direction or the other. Now, if the, we didn't have this problem, or if we did have a problem and the motors were going the wrong way, what we simply, or what we easily do, <laughs> is move channel one to channel five and channel five to channel one. Or you could reverse it in your radio, but I just like to be super simple and easily flip this from there to there. And if you guys are flying with a Grapner, we'll go ahead and export the settings for this and we'll post it in the article down below. So we're done with the wing? Yep. Well, so you plug the fuselage in. Perfect. Don't have much room there. Yep, we'll have a whole lot. All right, you want some longer uh, leads? Um, I think we can install through the cargo door. Can you? Yep. All right, so I'm gonna put the wing down. Want some rubber bands? Yeah, let's go and rubber band them on. Well, it finished up real fast in the end though. Stretch that one for you. That's a strong wing. Yep. All right. The last thing we're gonna do is we're gonna make our our rudder and elevator connection. All right. Put that there. Pop that out. All right. So we have a rudder and uh, rudder and elevator. This side over here is our rudder. So this is gonna go into slot number four. Now you can use longer extensions mm -hmm. if you want, but you like to keep everything tidy. And don't you usually just take the uh, receiver and put it up yep. on the top surface? I'm just there? being super difficult right now. So this is if you guys got short extensions and you just want to save space, you can do it this way. If not, you guys can get longer ones and do that too. And our remaining one goes into channel two. So that's just our four right there. Now, if you have another servo, you can actually get the bomb drop to work because we have a cut right here for a nine gram. Mm -hmm. For a nine so gram servo. So it'll fit right in there. And if this is like um, just like fire and forget, you just drop it once and the door stays open for the rest of the flight and you can close it. Or if not, you can check out on the forums because some people already figured out how to make the door open and close with a single servo. It just, that's not super reliable from what I've played with. So that may need some work. I'm still trying to figure out how I'm gonna do it myself because I haven't figured out it either. But that's pretty much it. Now we can just go and glue the receiver up in there or tape it. Can you get some tape? Yeah, I can get you some tape. 
All right, so now I'm just gonna go and tape the receiver in. So you guys can mount uh, your technology wherever you prefer. All right, now's the time when we get to put our props back on, yep. right? These are 10 4 5s. 10 4 5s. Yep, 10 4 5s. Actually, five sure. e props. the monster rotor props we like. Yep. These are like ABC style clones. The one thing with twin engines, a lot of people know, but if you don't know, it could really affect how things go for you, is make sure whenever you're flying, use the 80% rule. Don't run these things out of battery because what will happen is one motor will continue oh, to fun. run, <laughs> one motor won't. So mm -hmm. if this is a beginner, because this is actually a very easy plane to fly, uh, make sure that if you, you do uh, fly a little bit, uh, keep landing, check out your vet battery voltage, mm -hmm. uh, find out how long, but always use that 80% rule because the worst thing that could happen is you come around for one final pass, one motor shuts off, one spins on, and you spin into the ground. So the last thing we do is uh, center up control surfaces and yep. we're ready to fly. All right, can you get a hold of the plane for me? You got it. I'm gonna grab these two props here. Good? Yep, all good. Center, actually. Yeah, go ahead and do servo yeah. center. Yeah, we'll just go keep everything. All right, everything centered in the radio. Yep. Okay. Very nice. Uh, let's see. Yeah. All right. Screw. Screwdriver. Here. Yeah, you go first. All right, I'll go lock this area on down. Well, this paint stick has really helped me out this whole time, hasn't okay. it? Whenever you're designing airplanes, it's really important. Try always to do pull to positive. In other words, it's better for this to pull and give you positive and then push for negative. Uh, by doing that, say God forbid you have a really high speed uh, pass and you pull up, if it was pushed to positive, this could actually bow for you. Basically what Josh is trying to say is basically this is right here. Like if you were trying to pull on this piano wire, it is zero give, zero flex, but if you were trying to compress it, you get all this bowing action. And if this is your up elevator command, now you have a lot less push and the wind could in theory, pretty much keep it flat so you can actually never pull up. So it's better to have it pull for going up. Uh, we got a high and a low. If you're a beginner with this, I would strongly recommend setting everything up for low, maiden it on your low, and then going high later. But the way that your throw gauge will work is that we're going to set this on here. Now I got a feeling you got a lot more throw than that. Maybe just there that. Go. There you go. Uh, check the elevator. The elevator is a fun one. Are you ready for me to break your throw gauge? Ready. <laughs> I bet you it'll match the high though. Nope, a little bit higher there. Cool. So in this case, uh, show what it look, should look like. A little less. There we go. In this case, your throw gauge should meet up nice and flush. And what you can do is you can adjust your endpoints to get that, or adjust your dual rates. If you want to keep it where you have really crazy controls at the end, adjust your dual rates. If you want to make it so your highest rate is according to this throw gauge, adjust your travel. Now a very important thing is no matter how well you built the airplane, is to check for CG. Uh, for that, there's gonna be two holes in the wings. Put your fingers right in those holes and lift it up and adjust your battery to the point where you get it just a touch nose down. All right, Peter, so our throws are done. Everything's centered up. Our yep. differential thrust is ready. Mm -hmm. What do you say we go put a battery yeah, through Yeah, let's it? go fly. All right. So we have our uh, our CG. Yep. Our throws. Everything's correct. Rubber bands on the wing. Yep. Once again, if you guys aren't mm -hmm. sure about your first flight, mm -hmm. check out our six types, six tips. Mm -hmm. Types, check, tips. <laughs> check out our six tips for a successful first flight. And uh, always make sure you launch into the wind. Yep. And I'm going to launch because I, we have a waterproof this Yeah, time. let's not get in the snow. All right, sounds good. Ready? Yep, let's go. Hi Josh. That looks like it has some power. <laughs> it does. That is awesome. How's it feel? Feels great. Feels like the rest of the cargo planes. They just still know how to fly bad, do they? Yeah, they just fly, just kind of float around. It's like escorting a box around the <laughs> sky. Is this where you learned how to fly in 3D? Uh, a little bit. <laughs> and it's pretty windy up there too. Yeah. Yeah, you definitely are lacking for power. Mm -hmm. Now for this probably what static thrust we've done, right? Yep. We got plenty of static, we got plenty of propeller. <laughs> we got a plenty of big enough propeller on it. You take it up into a flat spin. Alright. Flat spins it is. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> this is spin as tight as the little guy, but it does yeah. pretty good for a big bird. It does really good, especially with all that vertical surface. Now you fly with no expos and no dual rates. Yep. Um, for us mortals here, uh, I would strongly recommend putting about 30% expo mm -hmm. and uh, probably 70% dual rates on low rates. Want to catch it? Oh yeah. Good luck. 
<laughs> nice good job josh <laughs> all right so uh, we want to thank you guys for watching thank you for buying things in the store and you can buy this now yes so. and also replace with noses so when you do crazy experimental stuff go to the store pick up some noses too all right so on that note i guess thanks for watching flight test see you guys next time time to put some googly eyes on her oh yeah googly eyes see you next time